I want to talk about a library called Mock. Uh, Mock is currently, in, uh, it's in the standard library as of 3.4, I'm looking at Eric. 3.3. 3, 3 actually. But uh, in Python 2.6 uh, two, uh, two onwards, it's just a pip install away. Um, mock, right, so let's just import mock. Just to show you a bit how it works. Mock, mock creates these mock objects that are used for testing, right? So there's these objects that kind of respond to add, to every, will have every attribute and have every method. So you can kind of stick them everywhere. So let me just create a mock. And this is my mock. Nothing more complicated than that. Um, what's, oh, all oh, right, here we go. Um, mock follows the basic principle of doc testing. Mock has all the attributes you want. And so we had a base mock. We asked an attribute. It's another mock. It's all marshmallows all the way down, mocks after mocks after mocks. They all have methods, which you can call and give its own mock itself, right? Um, and you can, do, you can go as far as you want. It just does not end, right? And you will always get something, and it always return something. So. Um, and you can call all these with as many arguments you want, keywords, whatever, and it'll still work, won't complain. Um, and afterwards, you can check what's being called on it, right? So you, this is how you do a test, right? So I have this random method which does something to my object. I don't want to instantiate that object because it creates a database connection and downloads the 15 minutes worth of data from Wikipedia, whatever. I just create a mock, it takes three seconds, send it in, and afterwards check has it been called with the right things, right? So here you'll get a listing of the arguments passed to that method and the, uh, the keyword arguments, and you can also get a historical listing. So if you call multiple times, you can get a list of all the listings. Um, you can also set a return value, if that's how uh, your function works. So when I call my mock, it now returns a string mock. As simple as that. Um, something else that I really find useful in the mock library, which is really trivial, but uh, I use all the time, is um, sentinels, sentinel values. Let me create a simple function. So foozer just calls foo on these uh, object A. This being Python, there's no types, so it can be any object as long as it has the method A, like my mysterious mock objects, right? Um, so the sentinel values, so there's these uh, thing called sentinel in the mock class, all you do is you do dot blah, and it has it all the, uh, right away. So in this case, it's bar. It can be anything you want. And they always equal to each other. But they're not strings, right? So if you're, f so if you're scared of passing a string because it could pass some tests but not others, just send a sentinel value, and it'll break where it needs to break, uh, but still match what you need to match. So in case of my foozer, right, uh, where I'm doing a dot foo b, I don't care what b is. So I'm going to pass in a sentinel to make sure that my test, act, that my function here actually passes b into a. So use my mock, mock dot sentinel of b bar, and then, uh, uh, and then check it again. Call args, it was called with sentinel bar. Um, now, the final thing in the mock library, which I really love, is patch. Right. Uh, patch is super useful in uh, refactoring. So let's write a really crummy function. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, take, yeah. I write Python. I don't need stuff from Java like dependency injection or, or storing variables or anything like that, right? Um, what's the first step to refactoring, right? Well, this is the first thing, Martin Fowler's book, first in the title. This Anybody? Unit testing. So you've got a crappy function, you need the unit testing before you can do any refactoring. Otherwise, you're just messing around with code, okay? Well, how do you unit test this, right? Because it's gonna, every time you run the test, it's gonna create a connection. If you don't have this thing called home, which you can reach from your machine, it's just gonna fail miserably. Well, this is where mock.patch comes in, really useful. It's a decorator. So let me just set up my, my mock here. Um, use it as a decorator. So what I'm saying is I'm giving the, the actual library in the patch here, so socket dot create connection. I'm, I'm telling it go into there and mock out create connection with this. So in my test, I run my test, and my mock will become so this value mock, and I give it a return value my mock. So for this function, it's going to become this. It's going to return my mock. Going to send hello. So now I can check for that, and the call arcs, and run it, and it passes. 
magically enough. Uh, handier is without the second argument, where it will automatically pa create a mock for you and pass it as an argument to your test. And then you can use it in your test doing whatever you want it to do. And I have to type really fast because I run out of time. And it'll do exactly what you want it to do, what you think it'll do. Uh, this also works, I just used functions here, but it works with the unit test library and methods in the unit test class. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>